Hi everybody, happy Thursday. So today's mini class, we're gonna be talking about sergers and uh, the, the intro to, to the, basically the baby lock and the, and the uh, baby lock sergers, which are the jet air. Sergers are wonderful things. Uh, what I like about sergers is that they're very fast. They're good for finishing the edges and a lot of times that's all about all people ever use them for was to finishing off the edges of your fabric. But they do so much more now. Um, I've had a serger since 1977. It was a baby lock serger. It was one of the first ones. When I had my costume shop, I used to have to do a lot of leotards. And um, I used a serger for the edge, uh, edges uh, to overlock the edges because uh, sergers were actually designed for knits. And whenever you're doing you know, dance costumes, of course, they're very stretchy. So you need to have a knit, uh, something that will handle those knits. So I had it. It was old. It was from 1977. It was a wonderful little machine. Uh, it did a two-thread flat lock and a chain stitch, and I thought that was wonderful. So it did a straight stitch and finished the edges at the same time. And it was a very dependable machine, as all the baby locks are. In fact, if somebody gave me any other brand, I wouldn't take it. To be honest with you, baby locks are workhorses. They're hard to hurt. I've tried. And uh, the only problem with those old ones and, and also the new ones that are manually threaded, the loopers are manually threaded, and we'll talk about what loopers are in a minute, is the, the problem with those is they're horrible to thread. Uh, usually I kept beige thread on it all the time because the only time it ever changed threads is when it went to the mechanic. Uh, in fact, my mother, who was a factory sewer, I bought this serger and she said, what do you want that thing for? You know, because the thread breaks, you got to call a mechanic. Those things are awful. Well, when I went overseas, I didn't bring it with me and she, she had it in her closet. I never did get it back until after she died because she loved that machine after all. Because even though it was a manual threading machine, it was easier than what they had in the factories and it was very dependable. In fact, it worked right up until a few years ago my son had it, and the only reason it doesn't work now is because it was in a house fire, and it's a molten glob. Makes a nice doorstop. That's about it now. And and uh, so, you know, they're dependable. I, we will see sergers, baby lock sergers, come in from the 1970s, 1980s, and they're still working. Um, and they're and like I said, they're power, power horses. They're used by a lot of costume and theater groups. Uh, in the, in the at least in the DC area, and they're just dependable workhorses. Uh, what I like about the baby locks is that jet air threading. They're easy to thread. They're fast to thread. In fact, the four thread serger. Uh, one time we had a competition at the old stories to work in, and I could thread that machine in a minute four seconds, and you know it was great. <laughs> so so they're very fast to thread. They're very fast to change the types of threads you want to use. And they're, they're just a lot of fun to use. Uh, I don't know what I would do without my serger. So there's basically the baby lock has two kinds. There's the four thread and the eight thread. And I think they started back in the 1990s with the, um, with the eight thread. And it was called the Evolve. And actually that's what I have is an Evolve. This is called an Evolve Wave. Um, they're pricey, I have to admit. Baby locks are pricey machines, but they are well worth the money. Once you start, you ever sew on a baby lock serger, you won't ever want another one because they're so easy to thread. They're so dependable. The stitch quality is always wonderful. They're hard to hurt. Uh, mostly when we see machines come in, it's just for minor things, you know, that, that they just don't break. They're, they're wonderful machines. Um, so it's better if you can't afford a new one, uh, is to find Craigslist or eBay. If you can find an old baby lock jet air threading machine, grab it. Even if it requires repair, it's worth it. Um, so for the older models on the four thread overlockers, you're going to look for brand for, for a models called like Imagine Eclipse. Um, I think. I can't remember the new names, but it mostly the, the Imagines, the Imagine Waves, the Enlighten. So those are all really good. Then when they came with the eight thread, and the eight thread seems really intimidating because you've got eight thread positions. 
I don't you rarely ever in fact I've never practically used all eight at one time but this is actually two machines in one you have between here and here is the same as the imagine four thread two three four thread overlock also does uh, what do you call the um, a flat lock as well which is two threads uh, now there's the imagine wave <laughs> so which ha adds the wave stitch and we'll talk about that in one of the, uh, the subsequent classes today we're just going to talk about Karen feeding them the machine what comes with the machine the types of threads the types of needles and if we have time we'll go with the basic threading next week we will go into four threads and we will go into more extensive lessons on how to thread this machine for the overlock we're going to start with overlock because between here and here it's a four thread between here this end and this end it's considered a cover stitch machine and a cover stitch is let's see <laughs> if you can see i don't know if you can see it really well well you have two straight stitches here let me see where it get right here you have two straight stitches here and on the back it's got that going on and it's great for hemming plus a whole lot of other things that it'll do People asked me last time, why are there red splotches all over your machine? And that's because when I teach, a lot of people forget their feet and forget their tables and forget the parts. So if it's got a red splotch, that's mine. And if I've lent it to them, I want it back. So that's why my stuff has all these red marks on it. Okay. So like I said, from here to here is a chain and a cover stitch. This is an overlock. They're very easy to care for. You don't oil these machines. That doesn't mean they don't require oil. They're going to require oil, just the parts you can't get to anyway. So you need to bring it in at least once a year. Don't ever let it go more than two years without having it serviced. It needs, these are very linty machines. So real linty machines. So let's first talk about the parts of the machine. So what you have is your, your thread tray back here. And it's got eight positions and they're all labeled. Uh, yeah, we're just going to talk about the, the eight thread machines that whenever you see you have gold and green on these machines So they're labeled here like this one says chain looper whenever it's dealing with chain and cover stitch that label is is gold If it is in the back where it says upper looper lower looper right needle left needle You can't really see that here, but it, those are written in green. So the one it's talking about green same thing This is my favorite part of the machine and this is what we call the cheat sheet. Very important. Here it's telling you how to thread the machine. Whenever you're looking at this and you see just green at the top, you're talking about just overlocking. When it talks about just gold at the top, it's just chain, it's just doing talking about the <clears throat> the chain or the cover stitch. If you see this double color there, those are combination stitches. Because that's the great thing about this machine. You'll see other cover stitch machines and other machines by uh, different brands that also do combination, do com do overlocking and uh, cover stitch. But rarely do they do both at the same time. So the baby lock is very easy to do that. So you can do combination stitches. Uh, a lot of things come with your machine that they come with. A tweezer I don't use it very often I use it for other stuff so it lives up on the on the thread tree <laughs> so, because I never use it it'll come with all kinds of little things in the packet so you it comes with two pouches a big one and a small one and uh, in the large one it's got what do you call these just thread discs and we'll talk about those in a minute it comes with something you can screw it into the machine your machine into the table and sometimes I have screwed mine into it because this thing moves so fast it'll stitch I think at 1200 stitches per minute and it's fast and it tends to go vibrating off where it wants to go so I have been known to screw it into the table um, it'll come with thread nets it comes with the basic foot and this is the basic foot it's flat on the bottom nothing real special about it but notice if you can see it that there's these little nubs right here in front of the needle and what this is telling you is the needle is the position of the needle if you're trying to use this as a guide so you've got these little nubbies there to help you guide your fabric others that I like 
is the clear foot because this is hard to see through. I almost never use this foot. I will usually use this one, which is clear, although it's not really all that clear. But these black lines, I put on with a Sharpie because they were too hard to see. So I put, I would just take a Sharpie on those, those needle indicator lines and darken those. And then my favorite foot of all is the open toe foot. And this, these, these, neither one of these come with the machine. They're accessories. What I like about this one is an open toe because it really shows me exactly where my fabric is going, where, the, where it's, so you can see it, how you can guide it. And you can see it very clearly. And it's my favorite one. So I this one's on most of the time. And the feet. Now uh, your presser foot raises up and down in different parts by different machines. On the older machines, they were always in the back, back here. So to put my foot down, I would just line up the pin with the bottom of the foot. And okay, this is nice because it's, and then see, jiggle it in. And now the ankle is engaged. Uh, on other models, like the Ovation, I believe it is in the front over here, or on the side over here. They're always in the front on the newer models, so, uh, because that as, was actually helpful, because if you're using these threads, you're going to get your hands caught in the threads when you reach for the press the foot lever. Okay, um, so, but that's easy to change the feet. Now let's go over the parts of the machine. This is a thread guide over here. Up at the top over here is the thread guide. And so you would just, they're spring-loaded, and therefore to put the threads in, let's see, well, let me just break one, and, okay, to put the, put the threads in, you just hold it like dental floss, and then you'll hear it click, Did you hear that, hear it, it clicks in, and that way it locks that in. So that, that now this is easy to remove and it will freak people out. Let me take all these threads off. I forgot the scissors. <laughs> okay, this is easy to remove, and and because this is a wearable part and these do occasionally will wear out over time. I've never had one like wear out, but I am told that occasionally they wear out. So when you go to put this back, you want to make sure that it'll go into these little slots back here. And you want to make sure that this is lined up right there. If you put it in backwards, which I've done, see they don't line up anymore. See they're offset. Okay, uh, so also talk about the dials. What this dial is up here, this tells you how much pressure is being exerted on the fabric by the foot. So you would in fact, this is all I ever use this tweezer for is because it fits right here. So you turn it righty-tighty to tighten it, and this would be to loosen it or to raise it up. Um, on the cream-colored machines, okay, cause if you take the front of the f your finger and you go across this right here, it should be even. That's the factory default. On the white, the ones that are pure white plastic, it's going to be in the back. So if you run your, this one is up, see how that's up? But on the white ones, it would be in the back. On the, I believe the Ovation and the Triumph, it is a dial on the side that regulates that pressure, okay? This is going to be your tensions for your chain needles. They're zero, they're like zero through, I don't know, they go all the way up to eight or nine. I usually go leave it at five, and I rarely will ever change that. Uh, and this dial controls all three needle positions. On this side, I'll turn the machine. Okay, this is where most of the tension dials are for the uh, for the chain looper. This is the lower the looper for the chain. And it'll say on the side that this is your cover. So you have this line with this little gold. That means that's for a cover stitch. And this is for your chain. And as these, these little bars get wider, that's the tighter tension. And I usually leave it right in the middle. Okay, uh, while we're over here, this 
Can't see it. Let's see where. Come here. Come here. Don't. There. This A, B, C, D. This, in essence, is your tension. If you think of that as your lower, lower bobbin tension, but there's no bobbins in a serger. You have A is your loosest tension and D is your tightest tension in that looper. And for the most part, A is for four thread, B is for three thread, C is for weird stuff, and D is for rolled edge. These are your threading ports, and it says in big letters, do not oil. I've never, I would never occur to me to do that, but apparently someone did, so they put that big label there. Okay, on this machine, it says upper, lower, and chain. That's to the jet air threading for the loopers. Um, with the newer machines, it doesn't have this pump. It has, and it doesn't have this. This is to on um, the Imagines and from the Evolve Waves and older. How you would thread this is you push this button in. You would push this button in firmly, turn the hand wheel towards you until the loopers engage. And so now that threads your looper. That is now it's ready for threading. On the newer machines, it's a motor. So therefore, you would have a lever here that says thread or surge. You would still turn your hand wheel till it clicks, and then instead of doing an air pump to put the, to push the thread through, it's got a little button that does has an air put pump that's driven electronically. And yes, it's messy right here. I have been really using this machine a lot for these masks. So these are very linty machines. Okay, now this is up and down, and we're going to talk about that later. And that's only on the eight thread machines because that is going to disengage this upper looper in order to use this table. We'll talk about that a little more later. Okay, on here they have different things. This is your upper looper. That's for overlock your lower looper for overlock, and this is called the chain looper or the orbital looper, because, let me release that, because it goes in an oval. See how it, I don't know if you can tell, it's sort of going like this, and that forms the chain stitch. This thing that looks like a safety pin is called the subsidiary looper, and what it's used for is that if you're only going to have two threads, a two thread overlock, then this engages and it causes an extra little twist in order to form a stitch using only two threads. If you were doing a three thread and you had this dis or two thread and you didn't have it engaged, you get nothing but a single line of thread through. It wouldn't form a stitch. On the other hand, if you're doing a three thread and this is engaged and it won't thread, this is why it's blo it blocks that hole. Also, when you're turning the hand wheel, only tor turn it towards you. You can jam things up by turning it the other way. Okay, you have two blades. You have this is your upper upper blade. This right here, this L-shaped one, is your lower blade. And what that does is that's your, your cutter. Um, and they essentially cut like a scissor. So that's why you always get a good 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 cut with the baby lock sergers. The old ones used to have a lever that would come up like this in order to thread, and it would come from the top to cut. Those didn't cut as well, but uh, you know these these cut very well. Um, now I told you you don't you don't um, oil these machines, except for one spot. Well, sort of. What you want to do is keep this thing clean. Try to, anyway. And this is was just, this has already been cleaned once this morning. And look at all that gunk right there. Blech. What you don't want to use to clean out this is the, the canned air. You don't want to put canned air in there because you're going to end up putting more th more uh, lint up into the mechanism mechanism of your machine, causing more problems. Now. These blades that we're talking about, the blades, that is a wearable spot. And the most of the time we'll, we'll see machines come in, they need, they're not cutting right. If it looks like it's chewing your fabric up, you probably need a new blade. Um, you can instantly ruin these blades by running over a pin. Ask me how I know. There are two blades. The upper one is made of a hardened steel, but this lower blade is an even harder steel. And it's hard to nick that one. And in fact, I have never nicked it. Um, 
but every once in a while, especially if you're stitching with fabrics such as uh, fleece, nylons, polyesters, painted fabrics, fabrics with flocking or sequins or anything like that, the residue will build up and you'll start to get it to chewing. And if it's chewing, it's not feeding right. So every once in a while, while I'm dealing with those fabrics, I will raise this to the highest point. I'll take a Q-tip and I'll take um, a little bit of alcohol and I'll rub this side. Then I'll put it down to where I'm exposing most of this blade and I'll wipe that down. Then I'll take one drop of sewing machine oil and put it on the other side of the Q-tip and lubricate these blades. If you do that, these blades will last a lot longer. This upper blade here should last you a good five to 10 years. I've, I've only replaced a blade when I was, well, twice. Ran over a pin and got stupid enough to get this in the way and it snapped the blade. And I think if you were in my club about a year ago, you remember the story <laughs> and that horrible video that was, everybody went, oh, and they heard that horrible noise it made. And I'm glad that I had glasses on because it did hit me in the head. <laughs> so, so anyway, that will help lubricate your blade and make them last longer. The one on the bottom should last you a good 10 years easily. This blade doesn't wear out as much. So that's a good thing. Another thing you want to do for maintenance is you want to sometimes brush out the uh, the lint in the feed dogs. You have two sets of feed dogs, one in the front and one in the back, and we'll talk about that later when we talk about uh, the differential feed. Okay, then you have, this is essentially your blade width. We call it the stitch width, but it's not really. You'll see that it has two sets of numbers. Like over here, it has an M, a 6.0, and a 3.5. It, this M stands for either medium stitch or marrowing stitch. These were originally in the turn of, of the 1900s, were called marrowing machines in the factory world. And that was, I don't know why. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you have M. I call it the medium width. Then it has a number of 6.0 and 3.5. Those do uh, talk about a measurement. The 6.0 is if you're using in the, the left overlock needle that's the distance between the needle and the blade and then you have 3.5 right now this is the right needle so it's 3.5 millimeters between this needle and this this blade and you can turn it as wide and you'll notice here how that goes back and forth now guiding your fabric there's this little thing here that if you put your fabric like Supposedly, if you use your left needle and you're putting the right edge of your fabric here, then it's supposed to be a one centimeter or half inch stitch. Can't really depend on that because what if you move your blade? So does that mark move? So we'll talk about next time how to ensure that or how to train yourself for a stitch or for a seam width. Okay, this is will lock your blade down on the evolves it it pulls retracts right out of the way on the imagines it sort of goes down a little bit lower and locks in place so that you can't move it and then when you release it it doesn't immediately come back up but as you turn the hand wheel see that blade start to go up and down again okay and this here is your stitch length it's zero to four and then where it's got the lines across that is a um, zero, to, 0 to 4 again for a rolled stitch. Other part that I want to talk about is something called a stitch finger. Let me show you right here. I have it on a regular. Right underneath the needle, you see three things that look like a tine, three tines of a fork. Those are called stitch fingers, and they hold the fabric up while it knits around the edges of the fabric. If you've ever zigzagged across a piece of fabric, and what happens is that fabric will tunnel in, make a bump in there. That's because it doesn't have anything supporting it. These support the fabric while it does the stitch around it so that that fabric doesn't tunnel. Then when you, if you take this dial and you go to zero, watch, I have for a regular stitch, I have three stitch fingers. When I have Go to, watch what happened, go past zero. Now I only have two, the one on the right retracts. And what that does, so if you're sewing 
and it's it's zig it's knitting over the edges if i take one of the stitch fingers away this rolls it underneath so that fat so then the thread pulls it and rolls that stitch underneath that's how you get a rolled edge on these machines okay i think uh the only other thing we didn't talk about is the differential feed which is this right here we're going to talk about that and these have been on machines since the I guess or late 1970s and what this does is it regulates the feed dogs and then changes how it stitches whether it stretches or it 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 uh, pulls it in draws it in puckers it okay now needles these machines take uh, for the four thread machines the four thread machines you can use any regular household needle do not need any special needles now if you have one of the older mechanical threading machines where you, you have to thread the loopers and you'll see next class on why it's so important to have a jet air threading machine you, if you have an older mechanical needle they will usually use a dc a d a, a dcx1 which is dc times or like it's like an x1 and those are shorter needles and those are special some of the really old ones had round headed you know the tops of the needles were round those were not fun to put in um so but on the eight needle machines in the chain cassette right here which is these three you have two cassettes you have a chain cassette and an overlock cassette and that's through on all of the eight thread machines these are your chain needles these are your overlock needles and so they're numbered c1 c2 c3 overlock one overlock two in the chain needles you you should be using the cl el705 needles and they're almost the same as a regular needle but the reason that they're not is is the fact that whenever this forms a stitch let me see turn this here you have the orbital looper you can't really see it but that looper goes like this okay and when it forms a chain stitch there is a little plate behind the needles it, you have this would be the plate behind the needles and your needles are like right here so what it does is it pushes those needles up against that plate and so therefore you'll notice when it's doing a ch uh, chain and cover stitch you, this machine's a little noisier you're going to hear that click 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 and that's normal but what happens with oh, i just threw the needles on the floor let's see if i can get a good shot i don't know if you can see this really well on the front of the needle there's always a groove going up and down on the el705 needles there is also a groove on the back regular household needles don't have that groove and why that's important is because while this is pushing that the looper is pushing the thread against that plate your thread can hide back here to give you a better stitch can you use other needles yes and no the problem with the l705 needles is that they only come in a universal point and a universal eye if i want to use a thick thread it's not going to feed into that so i will sometimes use a top stitch needle which gives you a great big eye and that's a regular household needle can i use it yeah however <laughs> also another time is if i'm dealing with leather i like to use a leather needle or if i'm dealing with a really really stretchy four stretch lycra i don't like to use a universal point because it can break those rubber yarns in the lycra and i will want to use a ballpoint needle so can i use them yes but you have to slow down you can't sew like your hair is on fire and and every few minutes get a, like a magnifying glass and check that needle for delamination because most needles are a solid metal and they are chrome painted on there they're dipped in chrome and that veneer can flake off where the el705 is a solid metal and it is has a chrome finish on it but it is a solid metal it can't flake off in your machine so if you're going to use an odd needle use it when you need to take it out when you're done 
and put it away, put these back in there. Because these only come in size 12 and size 14. And this is an organ, but you can use Schmitz, you can use um, Class A. Those are all good needles, but you, they need to be that EL705 needle. Okay, anything else about the needles? I think that, oh, yeah, yeah. On the overlock cassette, which are these two needle positions, you can use the EL705. And if you are out of these, you can use them in the overlock position without worrying about if it's going to delaminate because there's nothing slamming against it. But don't leave, again, don't leave it in there. When you're done doing what you're doing, special, take it out. Okay, uh, let's see. Alrighty, I think that's all the parts of the machine. Um, oh, okay. It's things that came with the machine that I like to talk about. They come, the Evolves come with these little screws, and yes, mine are painted red, so I don't lose them. Those are for attachments for using the table. And this is the and you can put your attachments on it. And we'll go over some of these over the next couple weeks, too. I usually like to leave them there so I don't lose them. Uh, it'll come with a screwdriver for the four threads. It is a regular flathead screwdriver, and this is a little tiny hex screw for the needles. It comes with this brush. It's worthless for cleaning out the brush out of the machine. That is too small to be of any use. However, this side is part that's very useful. There it is. Because this fits here and it helps you to change your needles so you can take your it helps hold them put a them all the way to the top this is the valuable part of it it will also come with a needle threader if it's for an eight thread and even if you don't have an eight thread these are wonderful to have for all machines because they're great for threading needles and we'll show you how to use those later okay uh it'll come with a wire and this is a wire so in case your threading tubes are clogged and that that's usually pretty much when 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 um, when machines come in is because there's something clogged in the jet air threading and it's this little this wire it's hard to see it's this wire but what you do is that you would engage your, your threading to and say it's stuck can't get it through then you take in the book, it tells you to use this wire to to uh, do your specialty, to put through your specialty threads. I don't like to use it. I only use this like a rotor router to see if it if I'm having problems. Okay, and it'll push through. It's coming through. So you can't really see it, but it's coming through. And that way. You can push it through until you can get your machine to a, to a repair guide. What I do is I have a piece of, of uh, Pearl Crown rayon on, or cotton on here. And in case I have problems, every once in a while I will dab a little bit of, a, of uh, alcohol on here and pull it through. And so I'll put that away. Um, these have to be well guarded. These are expensive little wires. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I don't use it. Um, okay, so, and, oh, let's see, anything else that I want to talk about? It comes with a big screwdriver that I don't do anything with. What that big screwdriver for is this. Um, this is a balancing stitch, and we'll talk more about that in, when we talk about the, in the next class. Okay, let's talk about some of the thread that we use in, in surging. I have some of my favorites. Okay. You can, if it can fit in the holes, if it can fit in these holes, you can use it in the looper. Okay, I have been known to get, I think, five strands of thread in those loopers to get to have blended colors. Okay, so there's lots of neat things you can do. Um, you want to use a good quality thread and pick your best threads for your needles because it's actually the needle thread that holds holds your uh, seam together. The looper threads just sit on the sides and they just, you know, they hold in the edges of the fabric, that's all they do. 
but here's some of the threads that I have I use for regular times. Uh, maxi lock is fine, um, but in the needles, I don't know if you can see this. Maxi lock is starting to get crappy. See how you got different widths widths of thread in there? Not too thrilled about that. So I will use other brands. I like to use Robus and Anton makes one. Um, they make good threads. Madeira, this is a Madeira thread. These are all really high quality threads. YLI is an excellent brand. Oh, I've got it. Now I can't get this out. But this is a good quality thread. Madeira, YLI, always have threads like this. I like that. Um, can you use regular thread? Yeah. I, I get, will get rid of some of these old icky ones whenever I'm dealing with the loopers. I won't put them in my needles but I will put them in my loopers. But the problem with these is as it spools off, this happens, this breaks needles and breaks threads. So if you're ever going to use these, what you do is these came with these little discs. Your machine came with these discs, the sponge disc. You would put this on top of the spool, on top of that pin. Take the, uh, well, let's see. Okay, I'll put one here. You would take this off, and it if it doesn't want to come off, turn it, and it'll work its way up. Take that off. That's the cone adapter. You're going to put the spongy side down, or spongy side up. This goes on top. This goes on top of this, and now it bypasses that edge, so it'll come out relative up. Uh, there must be. Uh, see, I got something stuck. I got to take some sandpaper and smooth that out. Which means something got nicked somewhere. Let's try that again. There. Now it's coming out. And the th thread comes out nice and easy. Okay? So whenever you've got something, if you've got a flat end on your fabric, on your thread spool, use these. Okay, other things I have used in the loopers only is I have used this really thick thread, which is called Candlelight. This may or may not go through the jet air threading, but no big deal. I will show you later how to get that into the machine with something called a thread cradle. This is YLI Wooly Nylon. It's very spongy, nice and stretchy. It's uh, great for the uh, rolled edges and the wave and all those stitches. Um, it was originally designed to do bedding for people who are bed bound because it's nice soft thread. So I use that and we'll talk about that later. For special effect, I've even used, this is crochet cotton. When you have a spool like this, when you have a spool like this, just put it in a jar. And just put it on the outside and use it that way. Works great. This is called Lana Thread, which is like a wool. I think it's a wool or acrylic thread. And it feels like wool. You can use wool thread. I've got some of that somewhere around this house somewhere. This is another metallic woolly nylon that I like to use. So I have some of that. And for really pretty edges, this is called a designer, this is designer seven. It's really high, high shine, really nice thread, very thick. And we'll talk about how to put those in. Or this, you need a thread cradle, it won't shoot through. Let's see, we talked about thread, we talked about needles, we talked about cleaning the machine. Think, ah, well we didn't talk about our thread nets. Your machines come with these thread nets this is not an original one. The ones that come with the machine are really soft and spongy. But uh, what I like about these is if you've got a thread like this, this thread puddles underneath really bad. So if you are going to use this, what you do is you put it in the bottom and then you curl this up like that. And it doesn't have to go all the way to the top, just leave it on the bottom. And now your thread, your, the thread will not puddle. See, it just, just stays. It comes out nice and easily, but it won't puddle underneath and get jammed. So I use that a lot. But what I really like these for is because, yes, do not store your thread like I do. That's wrong. Put them in drawers, in boxes. 
keep them nice and clean and pollution free. Well, maybe in my next lifetime. But <laughs> what I do with my threads, if you're going to put them in a box, the problem is, is there's no way to secure this. And you usually end up with all these threads hanging all over the place and a big wadi knot in, in your drawer. So actually all I do is I use this as a cover. I can still see the color through it and it keeps my thread drawer nice. Because I actually do have some in the drawer because if you think that's all the serger thread I've got, boy are you wrong. <laughs> i got a lot of it. So yes, there's some in boxes and stuff. So this kept, keeps them clean and keeps the drawer neat and keeps most of the... Well, it keeps the cat from grabbing it and playing with it too because she can't find the ends. So I like these. Um, where do I get lots of cheap free ones? In the grocery store. Uh, or a florist. This is what they use to pack um, mums and roses and stuff. In fact, this is from the last batch. I asked her to save some about a year ago. This was like not even one day and I've used up half of these and so you get lots and lots and lots of them and they're free and they're good for not only the, the serger cones but the big king cones for embroidery I use those as well so let's see if you have any questions email me at waltzquilteryahoo.com or send until next time stay healthy get some exercise so anyway uh, welcome to my studio again, and I'll see you on Saturday. Love you guys. Bye.